morning and welcome to Church Beyond Walls. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome you. We welcome you into the presence of the Almighty God. Bow your heads as we pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that is here, everyone that is on the way, those in social media world, Lord God. We thank you for everyone that decided to join us this morning. We want to lift your name on high. We want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We just exalt your name and we invite you here on today as we worship together, oh God, in unity. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We ask that you would bless our pastor as he brings the word on this morning. Oh God, anoint him to bring a clear word, oh God, from you. Lord God, bless our worshipers. Bless our drummer, oh God. Bless all those that will be giving glory to you, oh God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is... Psalms 92. It says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by the ten string harp and the melody of the lyre. You thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. Oh, Lord, what great works you do, and how deep are your thoughts. Only a simpleton would not know, and only a fool would not understand this. Though the wicked sprout like weeds, and evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, O oh Lord, will be exalted forever. Psalms 92, 1 through 8. is our Yeah. 
bless him, bless him. He's good. He's all kind, all yeah. loving. We would not know where we would be if it had not be, been for the Lord our God. He's a great God. He's a kind God, and he is greatly to be praised. Uh, James, J.J. Uh, uh, J. Harrison said, an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Incredible praise. And we love him on the day we thank him. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would have been taken out a long time ago. It is his breath that we're breathing. And, and the songwriter says, as long as I've got his breath in me, I will keep worshiping him. I will keep honoring him. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I am alive today. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He woke me up. He resurrected me today, and I am grateful. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know the God that knows tomorrow and has created tomorrow. But while I'm here today, I'm going to worship him and create a moment and say, God, I glorify, I magnify, I thank you for your goodness. Your love and kindness is better than life itself. Uh, without God, you might as well hang it up because without God, life is just hopeless, it's pointless. You have no purpose, but we have a reason. And my reason is to glorify and to live out a life that brings glory and honor back to God. Amen. We are in our series through the book of Acts, through the book of Acts. Uh, we Last week, we talked about I've got the solution. I've got the solution. And we stayed there a couple of weeks and we want to move on just a tad bit. And we're going to start a new series as we're working through the book of Acts. A new series. I'm going to read our passage of scripture and then I will give you our subject series. Subject series. We want to read. We got quite a bit to track through here, but we want to read. Acts, the third chapter, we're going to look at verses 12 all the way down to verse uh, 18. Um, yeah, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Verses 12 through 18. Acts 3, verses 12 through 18. God, before we go into your word, we just thank you. We glorify you. Cause your written word to become the living word in our lives. Uh, we ask that you would cause faith to come alive in us, Lord God. Open our hearts and our minds. Change us forever. And this we, uh, in Jesus' name, this is what we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for his word, for his living word. I count it a privilege. It is a privilege to serve you. It is a privilege to be here. It is a privilege to be able to go into your homes, to be able to be in your vehicles, to be in your uh, social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, whatever, YouTube, all of these platforms, we count it a privilege. We do not take it for granted, and we pray that when you receive this word, that it is something that is needed and that is timely, that will change your entire trajectory of your life, that just turn you around and point you in the right direction. But the word of God simply says this. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. He says, people of Israel, uh, what is so surprising about this miracle that we just saw last week? What, what's the big deal? And then he asks another question. And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk, watch this by our own power, by our own godliness, by, by our own integrity, as if we are somebody. Uh, but then he goes on to say, for it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of all of our ancestors, and the God of me, Peter, and my partner, John, who has brought glory to his servant, Jesus Wait a minute, I thought that Jesus was the living God. I thought that Jesus was the almighty God. Yes, he is. But Jesus, we're going to find out, is the servant of God. Uh, Isaiah 52 says he's the servant. 
He is the one. He said, a body, according to Psalms, you have prepared me to come. You didn't do that. You, you wanted someone special. Uh, he is the unique, special son of God that came to serve the, the will and the agenda of God. Jesus is the Lord's servant. And Jesus is the almighty God. And Jesus is absolutely man. Yet without sin. We're going to walk through here. We're going to walk through here. And then Peter goes on to say, this is the same Jesus that God is glorifying on the day whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate. Watch the text. Despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of this fact. This is an actual factual. This, this is not, Jesus didn't kind of die, but he died. He died. He was buried and he died. The Bible says, for in fact, the old covenant was brought in. They would put blood on the big toe, blood on the tip of the ear, blood on the hand. Listen, blood was everywhere. Blood, without the shedding of good blood, there is no remission of sins. And Jesus, listen, Jesus is the precious Spotless blood uh, is his blood. He's the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And then the Lord said, I want you to strike the post. And he says, when, I don't care who gets in the room. If I see the blood, I'll simply pass over. I'll pass over. It's not because of your goodness, not, not because of your honor, not because of how, how righteous, but the blood, what can wash? Away, my sins. Nothing. They, listen, I, I sit. Listen. They said one person said you're so excited and and you you you. Uh, listen. So I'm gonna try to calm down a little bit today so that you can understand me clearly. But 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 excuse me if I get excited. Excuse me if I get pumped up because it, if it had not been for Jesus, I would be lost. So 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 listen. I'm gonna try to contain myself. I'm gonna try to digress a little bit. So the text says, the text says, it was the same Jesus that y'all handed over. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this fact. Verse 16, look at the text. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before our very eyes. Then look, 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 he, 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 he rebukes them. Then he says, friend, look at the text. He says, friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. Even Jesus, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You did this in ignorance. If, we, if they stopped by, had, they had known that they had crucified the Lord of glory, they wouldn't have did it. But but what you did was the fulfillment of God's will. Nothing happens. Watch this here. You are for my note takers. Nothing happens in my life by accident. It is consequential. God allowed it. God led it. And for God uh, to, to be the glory, God said, I will get glory out of this situation. The Bible says that Jesus committed his life safely and the Father's safekeeping. And listen, uh, whatever goes on, God's got it. God's got me. God will get me through it. It's for him to be glorified. You said for your glory, I will do anything. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far. I'll give him up. I, I'll, I'll do all of this for his glory. Is it for the glory of God? Well, that's what we say. So, so, so this is for his glory, for his glory. So he's now he Peter uh, he he he, he digresses and says, "Friends, I, I realize that you and your leaders did this to Jesus, and it was done in ignorance. But God, verse eighteen, was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah. Listen to this: that he must suffer. 
these things. Jesus said that he would suffer. The prophet said he would suffer. But he said, hold up, I'm going to get back up again on the third day. I want to tag this portion of this text. We'll walk through here for, for, for a little bit. For a little, we'll be here for a little while. I want to tag this series, That Great Name. That Great Name. That that great name. Uh, they said God is great. And, uh, uh, that great name. God is great. God is good. God, God is grand. No, 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 no. As we work into this text, he says, uh, 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 and we'll get there, but he says, it's not my power that raised him from the dead. Not my godliness, but the one you crucified. Now, now, what's in a name? What's in a name? To answer your question, absolutely nothing. Nothing is in a name. No more than a slogan is for a company unless it is backed by exceptional quality in personnel, which is inclusive of, inclusive of their attire. How you dress, not only how you dress, Sister Mo, but their attitude. Uh, and, and listen, and listen, and not only that, but the product that they give must meet or exceed the industry standard that is not defective or deficient and promptness in getting those goods and our services to clients. So absolutely nothing is in a name alone. As your name or my name. It is only as good as the words we speak and keep. For the Bible says we are to put our word out. We are to swear to our own word. And if it hurts us, keep our word. So, uh, by, by the way, so, so, so a name alone is nothing but a name that's backed up by behavior. Uh, our words that are kept by the way we handle or mishandle people, whether it be with care and concern because of the fragility of their fiber or with harshness, rudeness, and disrespect because it is the truth. Watch this here. Don't ever tell me I'm telling them it's the truth anyhow. It is the truth. But be careful, brothers and sisters. We're giving people the code. Hard truth. You ever, you all heard of uh, doctors who just say you got cancer. And what they say is they have no bedside manners. I know I got cancer. I know I'm dying. I know I jacked up. I know I messed up. But can you tell me what a little love in it? The Bible says speak the truth in love. In love, in love, in love. But yet we're under the name, in the name of truth, we're giving the cold, hard truth. And lastly, we are known a name, a good name is known by how we conduct ourselves. Not so much in the easiest of times of convenience, but in a time when we are under extreme testing and overwhelming pressure. I believe Dr. Martin Luther King said it doesn't matter if life is good, but how do you handle your life when the pressure is on? When the lights are out, when, when nobody is there, when it's just you, Joseph, and Potiphar's wife, do you stay there and give in, or do you run like a coward and win? And, and listen, how do you handle yourself in times of extreme testing? When there's a thousand dollars on the floor, you saw the person drop it and nobody's looking at you seemingly, uh, seemingly, do you take it or do you give it back? Perhaps that money belongs to that person that's got to pay their rent or if they don't pay it, they'll be put out. How you handle yourself. So a name alone without the character to back it up is Nothing. But what about the great name of Jesus? I, I hear it in my spirit. The sunrise said it soothes all my fears. It, it calms all 
Mark, there's something about the name of Jesus. It is sweeter. Listen, it, every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Something about the name of Jesus, that sweet, that precious name of Jesus. Now, 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 now the songwriter says this. He says, we love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your Great name. Uh, we love to call your name. And, and he says, we, we, we just can't explain that what happens when we proclaim. And it says, King Jesus, no other name, none stronger. We call on you. Things change. Yes, when we call on your name, we love to call your name. It's something that we cannot articulate. We cannot explain when we proclaim the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is the Lord, the Lord, the one that was, the one that is and will come. He is God Almighty. He is the Michael. Let's watch this here. We are made in his image, but he is the mega theos. And I am the Michael day of the mega, the mega theos. He is the almighty God. He died. He bled at the name, at the name, at the name, at the name. The soteriological name, salvation in that name, healing in that name, the name of demons tremble at the name of Jesus. King Jesus, the songwriter says, no other name, none stronger. We call on you. It changes people. It changes the situation. It changes the climate. When we call on his name, there's power in that name. There was many Jesuses around, but the Bible says he was given a name above every name. Uh, when we call, he says, I'm free when I call you Jesus. Uh, listen, when I call your name, demons are trembling. I feel much strong. Have you ever been sick? Have, have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever been dealing with some things? And the scripture comes and says, casting down imagination and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Who gives me the knowledge? Who is the treasure of God? Who is the wisdom of God? But Jesus himself, when I begin to think of Jesus, when I begin then to think about I was in a horrible pit. When I begin to think about where he brought me from, when I call on that great name, when I think about that great name, things change. My attitude changes. All I got to do is wait for that name to rule. God is great and, the, and his greatness is in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, I'm set free when I call your name. I, I'm alive when I call your name, there's a shifting, there's a shifting when I call your name. You want your family to say, call Jesus. The song says, let us have a little talk with you and tell him all. He'll hear our faintest cry. He'll answer by him. It's a prayer wheel turning. Let us have talk with Jesus. He'll make it. Don't feel good? Call his name. <laughs> Trouble in my way, I may have to cry sometime. But Jesus will make it. Jesus, call him, call him, call him, sweet baby. Call him in the midnight hour. Call him, and he'll answer by your mind. He, 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 there's breakthrough when I call his name. Y'all don't, y'all know the mar, the, the pastor innocent you see, the Marlin you see, but when I'm in my truck, when, when, when I'm faced with a situation, when I'm faced with a difficult client, when I'm faced with a, and I'm in a situation that I can't get out. I remember one day when my tractor got caught in between a rock and a hard place, and I didn't see my way through. And God, I asked God, help me get out of this. And God sent somebody and guided me out. When I'm stuck, when I've lost my the call. Call him, call him, call him. Isaiah 45, 21 through 24. I'm, I'm just, this is just the introduction of this. That great name, consult together, Isaiah says. And he says that the Lord says, consult together. That's Isaiah 45, 21. 
Argue your case. Get together and decide what to say. I love this. Who made these things known so long ago? What idol? We're calling on somebody. We're praying on somebody. And stop telling your parents. Stop telling your boys about something they have no power. They can't, listen, they can't do nothing about it. And most of the time, they just going to talk about you behind your back. But tell Jesus. Call him, call him, call him. Listen, he said, what I don't ever told you that, listen, they, they, what I don't ever told you they would happen. Was it not I, the Lord? For there is no other God but me, a righteous God, a Savior. There is none but me. Let all the world look to me for salvation, for I am God. There is no other. I have sworn by my own name. I have spoken the truth, and I will never go back on my word. Every knee will bow then every tongue will declare allegiance to me. The people will declare the Lord is the source of all my righteousness and my strength. And all who were angry with them will come to him and be ashamed. Everybody. He says, listen, the ones that forsook me, the ones that rejected me, the ones that talked about me, they will see me again. He says, I'm coming back. And if you don't bow now, the Bible says this, fall on the rock and be broken. But if the rock falls on you, he'll grind you to pieces. Listen, baby, fall now in worship. Fall now in honor. Fall down in allegiance. If you don't fall now, God said, I'll destroy you. I've got to tell you the truth. If I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. That great, that great, that great name. Philippians 2, 8, 11. And then we'll work our text a tad bit, Sister Paris. And being found in appearance as a man Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name. Wait a minute. That is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee would bow those in heaven and those on earth and those on, uh, that are under the, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Isaiah 9 and 6, that name, that great name, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor. His name will be called Mighty God. That's the Mega Theos. Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His name. Now the Bible says, as we get in our text, that Acts 3:12, Peter saw his opportunity. Last week. He says, this, he says, silver and gold I don't have, but what I give you, I give you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. I want to say this. Has there ever been a time where God has had to exert all of his power? God has never had to exert all of his energy. What am I saying here? What are you facing that seems to be impossible for you? Have you any rivers that you, that you feel are uncrossable? Have you any disease that you feel you can't get through? Have you any problem that no one you, can, you can't tell nobody about? God can do it. God can fix it. There is not a situation that you're dealing with, not a mind problem, not a relationship problem, not a drug problem, and all of these are symptoms of the real problem. If you get God in your life, he will change it for you one day at a time. What are you dealing with? Let God in, let him have his way. God has never had to use all of his power. What am I saying here? Whatever you got got going on, God can handle it. God can deal with it. It ain't no sweat to God. I love that. So this man was born crippled. <laughs> the man in John 9, born blind. For the glory of God and the glory of that great name, Jesus. 
So the text says Peter saw his opportunity. Now, now look, look at the key words in, in the text. He and addressed the crowd. He says, people of Israel. He said, what is so surprising about this? And, and why are you staring at us as though we made this man walk uh, by our own power or godliness? Now, now let's, just, let's, let's, let's see if we can uh, move some things and, and, and break apart some key phrases in the text. Peter addressed the crowd with respect and a rebuke. He says, you are the people of Israel. Israel was a one that they named the prince having power with God. Jacob said, the Lord has shepherded me all my life. He experienced God. These people are the children of Israel. He, 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 said, he says to Abraham, I will make you a blessing. Your seed will be numerous. God has, these people were God's covenant people. Watch this here. What he says, what is so surprising, so surprising about this? I wonder what Peter is saying. As I thought about this, is Peter saying that why are you acting like God can't do nothing? The Bible says if he can raise the dead, what is it that God cannot do? Haven't you seen him work in your parents? Haven't you seen him help you pay your bills? Haven't you seen him bless you with a job? Haven't you seen him open up doors? Haven't you seen him bring you out of the prison? Haven't you seen haven't you seen him bring you out of the hospital? Haven't, him, haven't you seen him bring you out of the divorce court? Why are you overwhelmed with God? We, for Christ's sake, he's the almighty God. He can do whatever. He can do whatever. He's got all power. He's got great grace. Why are you overwhelmed with the fact that God has Raise this man up. You ain't dealing with a regular person. You're dealing with the God of the entire universe. Amen. So with your problem, don't compare your problem to you. Compare your situation to the God of it. For Christ's sake, you're talking to God. Uh, they, 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 they talking about letting me go. My wife said she might need me. Uh, my, my son is acting up. My, my, my daughter is sick. Sick. My job is not giving me hours. Have you talked to God about it? Have you told him about your problem? He's a miracle worker. Yes, he is. He's a hematologist. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she said, if I could just get to Jesus, I know it'll be all right. Every step that she realized the doctor can help me. And you know what? We got physicians. Physician, heal thyself. But see, we got people that can talk about the problem. That's the problem. We're taking our problems to people that can talk about the problem. I listen, that can identify, listen, they identify the problem, they examine the problem, but they can't fix the problem. <laughs> he says, Why are you amazed at this? We're dealing with God. So, so he, he says, what's so surprising about this? Now look at this. Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 38. Watch this here. You are the covenant people. You're God's people. Who he made a covenant with. And let me just throw this. This is for free. When God makes a covenant, if we don't be up by faith, when he is faithful. <laughs> God saves me on the power of the blood. He gives me the faith to believe what he did on my behalf. When he healed the man in John 9, he heals him, not because the man asked to be healed, but he does it and he heals him. God does not need your will to make sure his will will last. Why is that so, Brother Sam? Because your will gets weak when you get tired. Thank God his will is not handled by my will, but by his will. His everlasting, covenant-keeping promise. He's a promise keeper. He does what he says he will do. Now, look at that. Say, you're the people of Israel. Now, Deuteronomy 4, 32, we might not get too far. Through 38 says, ask now about the former days, long before your time, from day from the day God created human beings on the earth. Watch this here. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people, they said, we said they're the people of Israel, right? 
Has any other people ever heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and live? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and then a long outstretched arm or by great awesome deeds like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt right before your very eyes. You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. Isaiah said, besides me, there is no other. From heaven, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire and you heard his words from out of the fire. Because he loved your ancestors, he decided to choose their children. Do you realize because God chose your parents, he's got his eye on you to choose you, to use you greatly? Because of, he said, yeah, you, you, you saw God work. He picked Abraham out and made a people who were not a people. He just shows up in Abraham's life and says, I want to bless you. He just shows up in Abraham's life and said, I want to be good to you. Perhaps God is trying to show up to you, brother, and said, he said, I want to be good. I, I want to love you. I want to lead you. I want to bless you. I want to open up doors for you. Just honor me. Just come with me. God wants to move in somebody's life today. Today can be the next day of the rest of your life. So he meets Abraham bowing down. He says, I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm going to make you a father. Abraham walking around, listen, with a name exalted father. Uh, uh, listen, he had no kids, but God says, listen, what you was named at birth. The plans of God are from everlasting to everlasting. God had a plan for me. That they, the Bible says, the Bible says, I know the plans. This man's name was named Abraham, Abram rather, but when God got in, God said, I'm going to make what they named you a reality in your life because I got a plan. I had a plan before you was born. I got a plan today. Thank God that God has a plan, but the plan is not put into force unless Jesus died and got up. The blood makes the covenant a reality. I can have a will all day long. Yeah, I can will you this house, another house, and my cars, but until I die, the will is in act. <laughs> so look, he says, why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power and godliness? Now check this out. I'm, I'm gonna have to go here. Wouldn't this be the perfect time for Peter to promote himself? <laughs> Look at what I did. The people coming around. See, you don't have to say that you did it without making people feel that you did do it. But Peter spoke up, said, "Uh, -uh. I didn't do this. God did this. God did this. When when, when they bless you in a home." Don't get to telling people, oh, yeah, I, I was just working hard. I, I began to save money. I got some sense. Oh, I put money up. I stacked my chips up. Don't take God's credit for what God does. You know if God didn't do it, you wouldn't be here. If God didn't keep your wife here, you wouldn't be here. If God did but this is the Lord's doing, and it is awesome in our eyes. Be careful that you don't take the glory of God. Listen, and listen, we have a way of speaking without talking. <laughs> Peter spoke up and don't let people honor you and praise you. Don't let nobody glorify you for God's work. All the glory belongs to God. It's the Lord's doing. God did this. God made a way. God fixed it. God helped me. God healed me. God, it's his great grace. Give God all of his glory. Because David said, if it had not been for God, I would have been out of here long ago. So, 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 so had it been some of us today, we would have used this as an opportunity to promote our agenda. Oh, my ministry about to take off. Man. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen. Peter could have used this to seek his own glory. Uh, listen, if he wanted to gain a following, this was this. But, but the Bible says Peter saw this opportunity to give God the glory. Peter was very careful to give all credit and glory to the Lord for the miracle. He made it clear that Jesus was the Son of God. 
God did this because of what Jesus did on Calvary. God did this. 1 Corinthians 3.21 Therefore let no man glory in men for all things are God's. 1 Corinthians 1.31 That according as it is written he that glory let him glory in the Lord. Jeremiah 9, 24, but let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise love and kindness. And he's the Lord, so I delight in this. Matthew 5 and 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but give all of the glory to God. Yeah, 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 that's what the text says. So then Peter goes and says, for it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. God did this because of Jesus. I'm going to read this last passage of scripture. We're going to stop our, our lesson right here. We're going to stop right here. We're going to be here. That great name. Now listen to this. Romans 11, 33 to 36 says, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? A counselor has a plan. Uh, yes, he does. And who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him, through him, and for him are all things to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who has brought glory to his servant, Jesus? It is because of the servanthood of Jesus that everything, that anything that God does can happen. <laughs> he empowers God to extend grace. Jesus. And we're going to find out next week about that great name. Praise God. We love you. We love you. Let me quote this. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up those privileges and became a slave. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death. Therefore, God elevated him to the highest place of honor and gave him the name that is above every name. And God said, I swear before heaven and earth that every knee, every tongue will bow and confess that he is Lord, both to the glory and honor of God, that great man. When I call him, things happen. That great man. So we love you. We are praying for you. We'll see you again this same time next week uh, as we track through this series, That Great Name, That Great Name. Uh, we want to invite you to uh, <laughs> let the great, that great God do great things in your life. Uh, we want to invite you to become a member of this body, this local body, Church Beyond Walls. There's something for you to do. Amen. As you can see, we need help in ministry. We need people to serve and to do God's will. We, we, were, we are inviting you. This is the, uh, an open invite from the pastor himself that, 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 would, that if God has led you and God is leading you and, and there's something that you see that can't be done, get busy and get in motion doing that great thing for God. And then we want to invite you to share uh, in your, your, what the Lord has given you into this ministry, into this ministry. Uh, um, you can do so via our cash app platform to the dollar sign church beyond walls. You can do so via PayPal to 951-522-2125. Uh, you can do so via Venmo at church beyond walls, 
Um, you can also find us on Givelify. You put in Church Beyond Walls. You can put in 6065 Clementine Way, Bannon, California, 92220. You can locate us there. Your money will be put to kingdom use to build the kingdom, uh, uh, to serve the community. Amen. God put us here to serve humanity. Amen. And so we want to invite you to do so. We love you. We are praying for you. And we will see you again this same time next week. May the Lord richly bless you. We also want to invite you before we go to find us on our uh, social media platforms. If you go to www.churchbeyond.org, you can locate us there. We are on YouTube. We are uh, doing some things on Instagram. Uh, we are on Twitter. You can locate us. And if there's a place where you see we are needed, let us know. We'll get there as well. We are on TikTok. Praise God. Uh, we will see you again this same time next week. We love you and we are praying for you.